Tigers and the Hoyas set to face off at Johnny United Stadium. The Tiger Lacrosse Report starts now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets, and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome, fans, to another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas, along with the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Madlin. And coach, this Saturday, the Tigers taking on the Georgetown Hoyas, a team that comes in with a record of 2-0 and and a team that's put up double-digit goals in both of their victories. So, obviously, a Hoya offense that's hot coming in. Yeah, they're a balanced team. They got a uh, you know good face-off play. Their offense is experienced. You know, the majority of those guys are back um, in the mix for them. So they you know have a very strong attack unit. Their midfield is is solid. Uh, so again, they're you know watching them on film the past you know couple games. They know what they want to do. They you know get it to the right people in their offense to do it. Well, you look and they have two players after two games that have five assists in uh, Daniel Bucaro and, and Craig Burge. I mean, two guys with five assists in two games, obviously they're spreading the ball around. They are. Bucaro is one of the best attackmen in the country. You know, I don't think anybody would argue that. So he tooled us up pretty good last year. So I'm sure he's going to be, you know, uh, chomping at the bit to come out and, and do it again. Um, so we had to make sure that we contain him really well. And Burge, you know, he's a midi with five assists. So he's got great vision. We got to do a good job making sure he's got some pressure on his hands and, and maybe forcing him to the cage a little bit more than what he wants to do. But he's, he's a really good athlete too. So we can't, you know, poke the bear too much there. And what about Jake Carraway? Nine goals in two games. Mm -hmm. Great outside shooter, really good IQ for the game. Um, he's a local product, get out of uh, St. Mary's school. So I'm sure he'll be pumped up to, to play an in-state game. For your team coming into this week, you're coming off your first victory of the year against Mount St. Mary's. Um, what do you work on on the offensive end, and what do you work on on the defensive end getting ready for this game against the Hoyas? Offensively, we just got to continue to uh, understand our identity, understand what helps us be successful with, with sharing the ball and, and dodging with authority. And then we're still, you know, Coach G is still tweaking on, you know, kind of the lineup a little bit, who fits where and, and, and what that looks like because we still had some – um, chemistry issues out on the field uh, during the time uh, against Mount St. Mary's. Uh, defensively, again, we, we got to know who they are. Um, and obviously, as we talked about with Bucaro and, and Caraway and, and Burge, you know, those guys are all really talented, but they also got, you know, three to four other guys around them that are, you know, just as talented. So um, we got to be ready for all of them. We got to play disciplined, strong, fundamental defense and be able to get consistent goalie play. 
Speaking of consistent goalie play, their goalie, Morocco, he's got 21 saves in two games, so 60% save percentage. He's done a good job in the cage for the Hoyas. Mm -hmm. And he's good. He's, he's a guy that's been in there for a long time and done a really good job for them, so it's not surprising. You know, he's a solid goalie. Early season, you look at, at teams in the conference and, and how they're doing and, and, and scores all around. We're seeing some big upsets here in, in college lacrosse early on. Is everything becoming more and more parity? Absolutely. Yeah, that's been the case for the past two to three years. I think anybody that's been following college lacrosse has seen that. Um, yeah, I don't think you can really deem a lot of these things as, as upsets, you know, that, that's happening in, in college lacrosse. There's only 70, what, 71 Division One schools. There's a lot of kids playing high school lacrosse. There's a lot of kids looking to go and, and are, have the ability and, and the talent and the, the skill set to go and play Division One lacrosse. So it's all about who you get on campus, what you do with them, and then what that looks like kind of on the at the end result with it all. I mean, you look at North Carolina, you know, they've had two one-goal games, you know, both overtime, you know, against Furman and I think it was Lehigh, you know, their first two games. And, you know, those are, you would think, historically, North Carolina should be able to win those handedly. But it's just not the case anymore. Well, Albany blowing out Syracuse. I mean, who would have ever thought that would happen? Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's been a weird week. Now, this is uh, going into the Georgetown game will be the first time after the Georgetown game, the only time this year that you'll have a, a quick turnaround to play Loyola three days later. How do you deal with that leading into this ball game? Um, we just got to take Georgetown as Georgetown, you know, see what happens there, but obviously be able to, to regroup quickly and prepare for obviously a very tough Loyola team. Uh, so, you know, we talked yesterday as a team, we have to, again, without looking down the road, we have to prepare for the next two weeks, every day this week, you know, with, you know, how we're taking care of our schoolwork so we're not falling into next week with three games in eight days and, and behind in our schoolwork. We gotta take care of ourselves physically with what we're putting in our bodies and nutrition and hydration and, and making sure that, you know, we're set up for success with a quick turnaround, you know, by the preparation we do every day this week. All right, so we hope you, you can make it out to the U on Saturday at noon when the Tigers take on the Hoyas of Georgetown. If you can't make it out, Ben Rosenbaum and Hunter Lockie will have the call for you on TowsonTigers.com. So for head coach Sean Nadlin, I'm Spiro Marikas. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. And as always, go Tigers.